like plants, animals are also helpful for us in many ways. We even use animals as our pets. Animals help in many ways. We find a variety of animals around us. They are the cows, buffaloes, sheep, goat, dogs, pigs, cats, hens, duck and fishes. Cows, buffaloes are grown in houses and farms. These animals give us milk. Curd, butter and ghee are prepared from milk. Milk is balanced food for babies. It is nutritious. The hides of these animals are converted into leather. Chappal, boots, belts, bags and purses are prepared with leather of these animals. Wool and meat come from sheep and goat. Carpets, caps and dresses are made with wool. Sheep meat is useful as food. Dog and cat are domestic animals. Dog is a faithful animal. It guards the house. Cat kills the mice. Fish are grown in fish ponds. They are also available in rivers and seas. They give us meat. Animals like oxen, camels are used in farming. In forest, elephants carry logs of wood. Animals are gift to nature to us. We have to grow them and protect them. They are useful to man. If we help the animals, they also help us in many ways. Animals reproduce their young ones. The baby animals around us are seen moving with their parent animals. Young domestic animals grow into adult animals in period of time. Different animals begin to give rise to their young one to develop in the mother's womb differs in different animals. In a house rat, it takes about 30 to 32 days. Young one of a cat or a dog takes 60 days for the full development of the embryo in the womb. The calf comes out of the cow after development for 280 days inside the uterus. It takes nearly 20 months for an elephant to bear its young one inside it and to deliver. The young ones of animals require after delivery special care and protection. The mother animals are fed well in order to give more milk to the baby animals. The young ones are allowed to suckle the milk of their mothers. The baby animals are kept in clean, neat and healthy surroundings. The parent animals like their babies and keep them warm. Farmers build special sheds and shelters to keep the mother and baby animals. How should we take care of animals? Taking care of animals requires more patience. Care and protection of animals We find various measures and practices for giving protection of animals. Animals are to be taken care of. The domestic animals need good food and safe drinking water. They also require a clean and large shelter against rain and sunlight. The animal bodies are to be kept clean and free from infections. If they fall sick, they are to be taken to a veterinary hospital. The floor and surrounding parts of the shed of animals are also kept clean and neat. Rubbish and excreta of animals is removed from the floor. The floor is frequently washed and kept dry. The young ones of domestic animals are given nutritious food in addition to mother's milk. 
they are given vaccines to prevent diseases different types of shelters are constructed for different types of animals cows and buffaloes are kept in sheds with roof above horses live in stables dogs take shelter in small house like structure called kennels fish are grown in fish tanks and aquarium important points plants grow on land in water and in deserts plants in different environments adapt to their surroundings plants take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen sunlight is essential for starch preparation by plants plants are useful to us as food in medicines and in many ways plants are protected with fences brick walls and thorny bushes diseases in plants are controlled by pesticides and insecticides animals give birth to their young ones and also protect them are you all ready children to learn more about environmental studies we are now going to learn about agriculture and animal husbandry soil erosion and prevention we find a variety of soils around us these soils are formed by slow destruction and breaking up of some large and small rocks it takes many number of years to form soil from rocks as years pass on the soil gathers and forms a number of layers the upper layer consists of soft and fine soil there are no hard stones in the upper layer the upper layer of soil is mixed with decayed vegetables and animal matter so it is soft and fine it is dark colored and porous it is mixed with plant and animal waste this type of soil is called humus soil humus is a fertile soil it is very helpful for growth of plants and crops the lower layer of soil contains larger and larger stones the colors of this layer is lighter it is difficult to dig deeper and deeper there will not be any animal or plant waste in the lower layers of soil humus soil is light in weight because it contains very small and fine soil particles it is porous and shows air spaces there are many minerals in humus the roots can absorb these mineral salts from the soil roots of a plant can easily spread in all directions in humus soils the roots can get enough oxygen for breathing process therefore humus soil is very useful for growth of plants heavy rains carry away the smaller stones along with downward flow of water from the sloppy lands or hill slopes deep cuts and large and heavy stones are seen left on sloppy side of lands at the foot of the hill all small stones gather gradually on the plain lands the soil is deposited the rain water on the sloppy soils cut the soil into furrows and canals it washes and brings the soil to the bottom this process is called erosion of soil hills with vegetation lands with forest and trees near sea show help to conserve water soil erosion is prevented in large areas and on plains by forest plants store large amount of rain water every year inside the soil the water from soil is lifted by plants the plants 
evaporate the water and convert it into clouds. Clouds help us to give timely rains. When water is available in large quantities, crops give us good yield. Soil erosion can be prevented by growing trees on hilltops, slopes and plain lands. Soil Development and Role of Humus Farmers make the uneven soil even for equal spread of rainwater. They construct small buns to prevent soil erosion. Winds blowing with high speed carry away fine soil particles. Therefore, humus is retained in the fields. By growing a large number of grass plants in large field, the farmers prevent soil erosion. During rainy season, the plants absorb and retain the rainy water in the soil. Small bushy plants grown on the buns around the field reduce the speed of the wind. Fast moving winds break even big trees. Soil erosion is prevented by growing bushes and trees. Villagers grow forests in large areas. These forests prevent the speed of blowing winds as well as flowing rainy water. This water is absorbed by the soil. From the soil it is absorbed by the plants. So, forests should not be cut. Forests enrich humus soil. If they are cut, large quantities of water flows from hilltops into river and from river into the sea. This water causes soil erosion. The river water overflows causing floods. Then water enters into nearby villages and causes damage to the houses, people and animals. The topsoil or humus is lost. Humus adds fertility of soil for good growth of crop plants. Humus is to be preserved. This fertile topsoil is so useful in many ways for rich growth of all plants. By growing plants near seashore, the erosion of the soil is prevented. Pest and diseases of groundnuts and controlling measure. If the crop is healthy, there will be more yield of the product. Groundnut is used in our day-to-day -day life as well as in the industry. Therefore, it is important to learn about this crop. Among the oilseed crops in our state, groundnut crop is an important crop. This crop is dependent mainly on rains. Healthy and classified variety of seed is selected for cultivation. The seed is treated with chemicals and then planted in soil. TMV2 and Kadri3 varieties are used for cultivation. Seeds are planted after showers of rain. It grows best in sandy loam soils. Groundnut crop is often infected by root grab, leaf spot or ticker disease. Know more about each type of disease. White grubs. These insects burrow the roots of tender plants. Due to this condition, the affected plants dry up and die. When there is a group of dried and dyed plants in the field, we can identify that the plants are suffering from this disease. Red hairy caterpillar. This insect in larval stage eats mostly the leaves of groundnut crop. Due to loss of leaves, the yield of the crop is very much reduced. Leaf Miner These pests suck the juice from the leaves and petioles in the very beginning of the crop. There will be change in the color of the leaf and they become hard and brittle. Aphids these pests are small and green in color. They eat away the green chlorophyll of the leaves.
the leaves become folded. Tikka disease This disease is often seen in the groundnut crop. The disease is identified by the presence of large circular patches distributed on the leaf. The color of the patches is brownish or a coffee powder color. Teacher, what does cows and buffaloes feed on? Let me explain about it in detail. Feeds for cows and buffaloes The place where feeds are given to the cows and buffaloes must be clean and neat. Pure drinking water is to be given. Where there is rich source of water, napier and para grass is grown as feed to the animals. The cattle give more milk by taking these feeds. To make feed available in all season, bubble plants are cultivated. The leaves and twigs of this plant are used as nutritious food for the animals. The animals are fed with raw green grass, dried grass and sorghum plants. In certain seasons, green grass will not be available as feed for cattle. So, farmers dig pits in soils and preserve the grass. Inside the pits, they place layers of maize, para grass, ordinary green grass plants and cover these with soil. After a few months, it gets ripe and changes into a good feed. In dry seasons, this is used as alternative feed and is prepared mixing maize, rice bran, groundnut cake, fish powder, salt and mineral mixture. Role of Livestock in the Welfare of Rural Families Many people are living in villages in our country. There are more villages than towns in our state. The livelihood of rural people since many years is dependent upon cultivation of crops and development of cattle. Some farmers cultivate food grain and pulse crops. Usually, people raise cattle. Curd, butter and ghee are prepared in milk. The oxen, buffaloes are used for pulling the carts and ploughing the fields. The food is mainly prepared from rice and wheat plants. It is also prepared from the plants of sorghum, maize and other cereal plants. Farmers feed the poultry animals by giving grain and powder prepared from other seeds, which gives more energy. This is how rural people prepare enough food from pulses and other plants and feed their animals. Farmers, after extracting oil from seeds, the remaining oil cake is used in the feed of cattle. This cake is also used as manure in the field. The villagers raise animals like cow, buffaloes, oxen, sheep, goats, pigs, fishes, poultry birds like hens and ducks, insects like bees and silkworms. The farmers and other rural families are improving the stock of these animals under the guidance of veterinary experts. Through the livestock, they are improving their economic state. Cattles and buffaloes give abundant milk. The urine and dung of cattle is used as manure. Gobar gas is produced by using dung. The hides of dead animals are helping leather industry. Cooperative societies, milk procuring centers, are helping in improving the lot of villagers. After collections of milk, it is chilled and distributed in towns. By rearing sheep, wool is obtained. It is used in weaving carpets. The excreta of sheep and goat is used as manure in fields. Sheep meat is used as food.
the cost for the feed of these animals is less but the profit they gain is more some families in villages are developing poultry and improving their economic position eggs and meat are used as nutritious food poultry is developed as a large scale industry they are running poultry farms where there is enough resources for water some families are starting fish culture and earning money fish powder is used as manure as well as food some villagers are growing flower gardens different flowers grow in different seasons roses jasmine night queen chrysanthemum and calendulas are seasonal flowers along with these gardens the villagers are rearing bees bee hives yield honey and it is sold in the market with this there is further increase in their income Similarly some families are rearing silk worms on the leaves of mulberry plant they get silk yarn from these insects this will be the most important topic to you all we are going to learn about our universe the earth after sunset observe the sky from the top of a house as soon as it is dark bright twinkling stars appear like holes in a dark umbrella there is moon also some days round and on some days semi circular in the morning you will see the sun rising in the east climbing the sky and setting in the west the earth the ground on which you stand the fields and all the places around appear flat but people have found that all these places lying side by side form the surface of a huge ball called earth we live on earth the earth is round many people travel into space in recent times they left the earth in spaceships and travel thousands of kilometers away from earth they took photographs of the earth from space the photographs showed that earth is round spacemen also traveled around the earth they could go round the earth only because the earth is like a ball maglin in olden days people used to think that The earth was flat like a mat. In the year AD 1519, Magellan, a Portuguese sailor, started from Spain with a ship on a world tour. The ships traveled for 3 years in the same direction. At last in 1522 AD, one of his ship reached Spain again. Traveling in one direction, it became possible for maglin's ship to reach the starting point again only because the earth is round the earth surface is curved even though the earth is round like a ball its surface appears to be flat teacher how does earth revolve revolution of earth is an interesting fact Let me tell you about it now. The revolution of the earth. Every object on the earth needs some support to rest. The earth should also rest upon some object or other. The earth pulls towards itself every object around it. So all the balls fall on the earth. We say that earth attracts all the objects near it attraction among objects not only the earth but all objects attract one another the earth is bigger than every object near it so all the objects fall on it due to its attraction if 
the earth did not attract them. All the objects simply float around. They will have no weight at all. Weight means the attraction of the earth. The earth is attracted by the sun. The sun gives us heat and light and the stars that appear to us during the night, all of them pull the earth towards them. The stars are very, very far away. But the sun, which is nearer, pulls the earth towards it strongly. The earth has to fall on the sun. The sun is a burning ball of fire. Revolution of the earth If the earth were not moving, it would go and fall on the sun. So, the earth never stops still. It revolves around the sun at a distance of very high speed. It never goes near the sun. The movement of the earth around the sun is called the revolution of the earth. Rotation of the earth Every day morning, we see the red, round ball-like sun in the east. Then we say, the sun has risen. Day has begun. The sun slowly climbs the sky. It descends to the west by evening and disappears. We say, it's night. The sun rises again and the day begins. A night and a day form one day. Rotation of the earth The earth not only revolves around the sun, but it also turns around itself like a spinning top. The movement of the earth around itself is called rotation of the earth. Day and night As it turns round and round, the earth brings us face to face with the sun and then away from it into dark and again into the light. Duration of the day It takes 24 hours for the earth to turn around itself once. This is what we call a day. Half of it is daytime and half is the night time. Duration of the year It takes one year for the earth to run around the sun once. During this period, the earth turns around itself 365 times. That is why there are 365 days and 365 nights in a year. Direction of Rotation The earth turns around itself from the west to the east. That is why it appears in the east first, slowly climbs up in the sky, crawls to the west and appears to set in the west. Children, now tell me, where do we get light from during the daytime? We get light from the sun. It gives us heat and light. The sun The sun gives us heat and light. The sun becomes brighter as it ascends the sky. When it is noon, it is straight above our heads. The shadows cast by it are so short at noon that your shadow is under your own feet. The sun slowly descends the sky and finally sets in the west in the evening. At sunset, it appears red in color again except in the early morning and late in the evening before sunset you cannot look at the sun it is very hot and dazzling the sun is huge ball of fire such bodies which emit heat and shine by their own light are called stars the sun is our nearest star Rotation of the Sun Sometimes the moon comes between us and the sun. Then we can see the sun through glass plates coated with smoke. If we look at the sun through them, 
we will find flames and burning gases on it. There are dark patches also on the sun. Their position also changes if we observe them constantly. From these observations, people have come to know that the sun also rotates around itself. If it does not rotate, the sun will also fall upon some other bigger sphere. It takes 25 days for the sun to rotate around itself once. The sun is a star. Stars are also burning spheres in the sky similar to the sun. Many of the stars are bigger than the sun, but they are very, very far away. Their heat does not reach us. As the sun is our nearest star, it is able to give us so much of heat and light. The stars are not fixed. They also rotate about themselves. Planets The sun attracts the earth and makes it go round it. Similarly, some more spheres are attracted by the sun. They do not give heat and light. They are called planets. Any spheres which goes round and a star regularly is called a planet. The earth is a planet. It is a planet of the sun. Other stars too may have planets of their own. There are nine planets that go round the sun including the earth. They are called the Navgrahas. Satellite There are spheres that go round the planets too. While the earth goes round the sun, the moon goes round the earth. Such spheres which revolves around a planet are called satellites. If the earth is a planet of the sun, the moon is a satellite of the earth. The solar system The sun's family The sun, its planets and the satellites of the planets move along in their fixed path regularly. The path of each sphere is called its orbit. As all the spheres travel in their own orbits without striking into one another and move along with the sun in the middle, people call the sun its planet and their satellites together the solar family or the solar system. The nine planets The Navgrahas or nine planets revolve round the sun in their own orbits at different distances from it. The planets nearest to the earth is named Mercury. The next is Venus. The third is our earth. The fourth is Mars. The fifth is Jupiter. The sixth Saturn. The seventh Uranus. The eighth Neptune and the last one Pluto. The fifth planet, Jupiter, is the biggest of the sun's planet and Mercury is the smallest. Mercury is also closest to the sun. Jupiter has four satellites. Saturn has beautiful rings around it. Out of Saturn's nine satellites, one named Titan is as big as the planet Mercury. The Moon Moon, the satellite of the Earth, is at a distance of 400,000 kilometers from the Earth and revolves around it. It takes 29 and a half days for the Moon to rotate around itself once. It takes the same time to revolve around the earth once. That is why only one side of the moon appears to us. The other side never appears. We count the period of one revolution of the moon as one month of ours. The moon, like the earth, 
and the other planets has no light of its own. It reflects the light of the sun. The moon is 150th the size of the earth. The attraction is less on it. If you weigh 30 kgs on the earth, you would weigh only 5 kg on the moon. It means all objects weigh on the moon one-sixth of their weight on the earth. Teacher, can you explain us about the stars and the various constellations in our galaxy? Oh, sure. I'll explain about it in this session. Stars and Constellations People of all countries have been observing the stars for thousands of years. Some of the stars appear to be moving in groups. They recognize shapes to them. That way, it was easy to recognize them among the millions of stars in the sky. One such group was called the Great Bear by people of one country. The same was called the Dipper by others and a horse with helter by some others. Indians called it the Saptarishi Mandala, the group of seven sages. Seven stars appear prominently in this group. Such group of stars are called constellations. Constellations do not stay at one place but move about in groups. They also appear to move from east to west like the sun and the moon. The pole star The straight line along the two outer stars of trapezium in the great bear that reaches a twinkling star in the north is called the pole star. Orion There is another constellation which can be easily identified on account of the brightness of its stars. It is called Orion, the hunter. Two bright stars form the two shoulders of the hunter. Three stars form his belt and three or four stars in a slanting position make up the dragger hanging from the belt. Galaxies In addition to the constellations identified by man, many more masses of stars appear in the sky. They appear like very wide flat disks. These disks revolve at great speed. The stars in these disks appear to be close to one another and also like flowing milk. So, they are called rivers of milk galaxies. There are lakhs of such galaxies in the sky. The Milky Way When the sky is clear in the night, we find a mass of stars like a path across the sky. It spans the sky from northeast to the southwest. It is called the Milky Way. Our solar system is present in this Milky Way with so many stars is a very minute part of a galaxy. Millions of similar galaxies are present at great distances from one another. The Universe The Earth on which about 350 crores of people live is only a planet going round a star called the Sun at distance of about 15 crores kilometer. The Sun is one star among the mass of crows of stars in a galaxy. Scientists say that there are millions of galaxies. All these countless galaxies together form the universe. The most important topic of environmental studies is about health. Health education is what everyone must be aware of. Let us now have a look on Health education. Health education. Immunization. Health is basic to life and a foundation of activity. Everyone wants to remain healthy and 
lead a better life. Health is wealth and cleanliness is the root cause of health. We have learned that unhygienic surroundings, contaminated water and food are the breeding places for germs which cause infectious disease. We must take certain precautions to avoid infectious disease. The person suffering with the disease should be separated from healthy individuals. So, keep the patient in a separate room until he is free from infection. The persons who attend the patient should wash their hands clean with soap and water. The utensils like glasses, plates used by the patient should be boiled and clean. The soiled clothes should be boiled and dried in the sun. The drinking water should be boiled, cooled and used. In spite of all these precautions, infectious disease spread from person to person. These diseases are caused when germs enter and multiply in our body. When the germs enter the body, it resists and fights against them. Antibodies are produced in the body to kill these germs. By creating immunity to the body, certain diseases can be avoided. This idea was first discovered by a scientist called Edward Jenner. Once upon a time, a smallpox was dreadful disease. It killed many people and those who survived cut permanent disfiguring marks on their faces and bodies. Many persons became blind and deaf due to smallpox. Vaccination against smallpox is one of the best preventive measures. This was found by Jenner in 19th century. Smallpox is eradicated from our country by giving vaccination. The protective substances which are introduced into the body to create immunity against certain disease are called vaccines. Vaccines are introduced into the body through vaccination or inoculation. The process of creating artificial immunity by introducing immunizing agent or vaccines into the body against certain infectious diseases through vaccination or inoculation is called immunization. Vaccines can be taken at government hospital and primary health centers free of cost. Diseases can be prevented by taking vaccines in time. So, it is essential that everyone should take vaccination and inoculation in time. Teacher, what are the symptoms and precautions of various diseases? I will explain it to you now. Now, let us learn about certain diseases. Polio Polio is an infectious disease which usually affects children up to 5 years of age. Symptoms Polio starts with cold or sore throat, fever, headache, vomiting, pain and tenderness of the muscle of the limbs are the important symptoms. Sometimes it results in paralysis of limbs which remains lifelong. Precautions and Treatment The patient should be treated by a doctor. The children suffering with polio should be separated from other children. Complete bed rest should be given. The persons who attend the patient should clean their hands with soap and water. Necessary assistance is to be given for the affected person to walk better. Prevention of Polio Polio vaccine is available which is given orally. This vaccine is given to the children below one year age in three doses at an interval of one month. A booster dose is given at the age of two and a half years. Diphtheria Diphtheria is an infectious disease which usually 
affect children up to 5 years of age. It occurs more frequently in winter. Symptoms It starts as sore throat, chills with fever, sometimes vomiting and headache. Grayish white patch is seen on the tonsil and inside the throat. It may cause great suffering like difficulty in breathing, choking sensation and loss of power to speak. Death may also occur due to heart failure. The germs that cause diphtheria are present in the discharges from the nose and throat of patients. The germs are transmitted by moving closely with the patients or by using their toys, utensils, etc. or by sharing their clothes or bed sheets. Preventions Whenever the child is not well, a doctor should be immediately consulted. The patients should be isolated or kept in well-ventilated room. All the articles and clothes used by the patients should be boiled. Diphtheria is a dreadful disease. It can be prevented by timely vaccination. Three DPT injections are given at monthly intervals during the first year of the child. Booster dose is given after two and a half years age. The preventive medicine is the DPT vaccine. Whooping cough This is also a highly infectious disease of young children under the age of 5 years. Symptoms The disease starts with common cold, cough and slight fever. Soon the cough becomes troublesome and fits of cough occur. Face becomes red during coughing. The violent cough ends in a whoop. Spread of the disease The disease is caused by germs which comes out from the discharges of the nose and throat of the patient. The disease will spread by moving closely with the infected children and by using their articles or sharing their clothes. Prevention The child should be put to bed in a well-ventilated room and kept under the care of a doctor. The disease can be prevented by immunizing all infants with whooping cough, vaccines through DP. Tetanus. It is also a dreadful disease which may occur to a person of all age groups. Symptoms. The person suffer with stiffness of limbs and pains in the neck and jaw, locking of jaws, fever, severe headache are some of the symptoms of this disease. Spread of disease. The germs that cause Tetanus are found in the soil, in dung of cattle and horse. They enter our body through piercing injury or cut. Prevention Wash the wounds and the skin around it by clean water and apply Dettol. Consult the doctor immediately. Triple vaccine injections are given to the children to avoid tetanus. Important Points Health is wealth and cleanliness is the key to health. We must take some precautions against spread of certain diseases. Certain communicable diseases can be avoided by creating immunity in the body. The immunizing agents which give protection against certain communicable diseases are called vaccines. To create immunity to the body, by taking vaccination or inoculation is called immunization. Vaccines are given in the form of vaccination or injections. Different vaccination and inoculation are taken to avoid diseases like polio, diphtheria, whooping cough and tetanus. Vaccination are given in the government hospitals and primary health centers free of cost. By taking timely vaccinations and inoculations in consultation with a doctor, a certain infectious diseases 
can be avoided. Polio, diphtheria, whooping cough are some diseases which occur among young children. Tetanus is a dreadful disease which occurs to the person of all age group. Triple antigen vaccine called in short DPT is given to the young children to protect against diphtheria, whooping cough and tetanus. Three doses of DPT vaccines is given to the infants at intervals of one month starting from the age of one and a half to nine months. Booster dose is given at the age of two and a half years. Polio vaccine is given to the children in the form of oral drops along with DPT vaccine. The person who receives cuts or deep wounds should take anti-tetanus injection to avoid tetanus. Every one of us will surely remember the important points and will take care of us. Diarrhea Diarrhea is one of the most common infectious diseases. Persons of all ages suffer from diarrhea, but it is more common among children. Different types of germs are responsible for the spread of diarrhea. These germs are found in dirty water, soil and in the stools of the patients suffering with diarrhea. How does diarrhea spread? Diarrhea spreads by eating the fruits and vegetables without cleaning, by collecting and eating the food left on the soil, by eating stale food or the foods kept unprotected for a long time. By eating food contaminated with dust and flies. By eating unripe fruits and oily vegetables. Symptoms of Diarrhea Persons suffering with diarrhea may have frequent watery motions. Vomiting may accompany diarrhea. Tongue and lips become dry and there will be increase in thirst. Reduction in urine, sinking eyes, difficulty in breathing, cold hands and feet are some of the common symptoms of diarrhea. The patient may become unconscious. He may die even. Foods to be given to diarrhea patients. Soft rice, vegetables can be given. Plenty of fluids like buttermilk, coconut water, soups and barley water can be given. Drinking water should be boiled and used. Oral rehydration mixture can be given to the patients. Prevention of diarrhea Our surrounding should be kept clean. Garbage and rubbish should not be dumped in the open. Foods should be properly covered to get rid of flies. Eat fresh food. Always eat boiled and hot food. Do not eat food exposed to dust and flies. Do not eat stale food or unprotected foods kept for longer time. Important points. Diarrhea is one of the most common infectious diseases. Person of all ages suffer from diarrhea. The germs responsible for the spread of diarrhea are found in dirty water, dirty soil and in the stools of the patients suffering with it. Diarrhea spreads by eating stale foods, contaminated foods with dust and flies, raw fruits and vegetables without washing and by drinking unsafe water. The persons suffering with diarrhea may get frequent watery motions, increase in thirst, Reduction in urine, sinking eyes, cold hands and feet which may lead to death. The persons suffering with diarrhea lose water and salts from the body which may lead to dehydration. Oral rehydration mixture can be given to the patients to replace the water and salts lost from the body. Oral rehydration mixture can be prepared by adding a pinch of salt and a teaspoonful of sugar to a glass of boiled cold water. 
it can be given in sips until the patient recovers